Hey everyone, great to be here. I'm glad I'm, I actually made it all the way, even if I'm a bit jet lagged after the travel. Um, I'm, I'm Matt Bielman, CEO and co-founder of Netlify, and I started Netlify more than a decade ago um, to help build a better web uh, and to enable the world's developers to create and unlock with the full power of the web. Um, and in this world where we are right now, right, like it was really interesting to have the intro from, um, from Eric right before me, right? Like because we're definitely in this special moment where the people building for the web are fundamentally really changing and these AI builders are becoming the entry point for building software for, for probably in the future the vast majority of actual software builders, right? Like, and Veed has put itself right in the middle of that whole ecosystem of AI tools working with, with, with code. And we're in this special moment where for all of us that build developer tools, whether it's Vite or whether it's Netlify, we're suddenly in this world where like a year ago, the audience we were building for was maybe 17 million professional JavaScript developers. And today, it's more like 3 billion people that can have computer access and can use spreadsheets, right? Like that level of, 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 of technological insight. So that really changes for a lot of us how we have to think about who is using our software, and how are they using it through agents. And that leads to, to my topic today of uh, AX or agent experience and, and why it matters. Um, I think right now everybody in the developer tool space is becoming really aware of how important it is that their tools works well for LLM-based agents. And in the future, we'll see that being a, a, a concern that's like more of a foundational concern of all the software we're building. Back in uh, the 90s, Don Norman and um, Jacob Nielsen, a fellow Dane, coined this term UX, uh, a user experience that really went from like thinking about software as like a set of a checklist of features to an experience someone had interacting with it that included not just the software itself, but also the brand of the company or the manual and documentation and the user interface and all of that. Um, and it became a really central part of like, how do we actually differentiate a software product from another software product? In 2010, Jeremiah Leacock coined the term developer experience, or DX, uh, as a way to talk about all of these tools that developers build on top of all of these platforms, where you can also think of Vite as a platform, like the DX or the developer experience being a differentiated part of like how many developers are actually gonna adopt it and extend it and, and, and expand it. And the first decade of Netlify was really centered around this idea of DX, of like how do we make the experience of Netlify the best and the simplest and the most frictionless for, for developers. But then at the start of this year in, in January, which in AI time still feels like a decade away, um, I wrote this article uh, introducing the term AX um, and talking about why, why this matters, and defining AX as the holistic experience that um, agents will have as the user of a product or platform. And sort of realizing that in this new world, when I'm building Netlify, right, like I'm not just building for developers that experience the product, I'm now also building for this new kind of user that's an autonomous agent with um, large language models trying to make sense of like, how should I use this product on behalf of a user? How should I do things with Netlify? And V is sort of facing the same, like um, Eric just mentioned, the same set of, of challenges, right? Like how do we make sure that Veet as a base for building all of this software works really well for code generating agents? And AX I think will differentiate both platforms, products and any kind of digital experience. As I mentioned right now, I think every one of us building developer tools are really aware of it because of this massive expansion of like the kind of people that can actually use our tools, but I think Agents will access all kinds of software and having a great agent experience will be really foundational to whether you build successful software or not. So how, uh, how do we AX? Um, again, 
AX is not like a feature or, or an API or like MCP, right? Like AX is a discipline just like UX or DX is a discipline, right? Like it's a question of understanding agents, understanding how they work with the tools we're building uh, and how we make their experience and in that way the experience of the users accessing our software through an agent better. And agents are really just like a loop over LLMs and tools working towards a goal or an objective in, in an autonomous way, right? Like it's up to the agent to decide, have I reached that goal and do I stop the loop or do I need to call another tool or do another LLM call? Um, and, and that's sort of like the core of an agent is this agent loop that use LLMs and call tools. And the LLMs depends on context which is sort of like the foundational part of, of, of the agent experience. Can we get the right context into this loop in front of this LLM so it understands, one, that it should use our tool at all, and, and, and two, how does it use our tool? And the second part of this is the actual tools, right? Like, can the agent use our tools, um, and how is these tools for, for an agent to use? And when I think about AX in practice today, I think there's like roughly four big aspects of it that, that, that I'm looking really carefully of. There's access, which for me is fairly simple, like it's kind of there, where, but, but for a platform like Netlify, it's more of a question of like, how can we actually make sure that these agents can access Netlify? Um, there's context, the whole topic of context engineering of like, how do we make sure that the LLMs inside the agent loop has the right context to work with our software. There's the tools themselves. How do we make tools that agents can use well? And then there's orchestration. How can we, from our products, from our software, orchestrate the agents to go do things on behalf of users? And if we go through these, like when, when we talk about access, we pioneered at Netlify some of these flows where we talked about like um, deploy anonymously and then claim later, where we built this capability for an, for an LLM where Bolt, for example, was an early adopter of this. You could just hit a deploy button. It would deploy to Netlify even if you had no idea what Netlify is and you had never created a Netlify account. And then later on, it would give you a link where you could go in and, and claim your Netlify project and, and add it to your Netlify account. And we've seen that become like a really broad pattern across the industry. NeonDB started like this uh, Instagram, and now it's called uh, uh, Neon.new, I think, where, where you can also just like instantly create a Postgres database without signing up for Neon or anything. And then later on, you can go uh, in a cloud flow, in, 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 a, in a flow and claim it. And we integrated that into Netlify as Netlify DB which really just means that like, if, if an LLM writes code that requires NeonDB, when you run our dev server or you deploy to Netlify, we'll just like, make sure that the database is there, even if you've never heard of NeonDB, and we'll make sure it works. And then if you actually want like, to do something with it, we'll send you to NeonDB and you'll claim that database and add it to your account and so on, right? Like, this has become like, a really common access pattern. There are a lot more, like if I had more time, I could talk a lot more about the complex of access and authorization and permissions and so on. But instead, I'll jump on to, to, to context and sort of very briefly talk about context. The, the, the central part of context is, is context engineering that's really emerging as like the most important part of working with, with, with LLMs. Um, but there's like a lot of really basic things, right? Like for example, the VDocs is a good example that, 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 that now has a simple option of swapping out .html with .markdown and access the same docs, but in an LLM-friendly way. And we are, of course, seeing this becoming like a really common pattern across documentation sites. Latest, we're starting to see people use content negotiation to dynamically see, like, is this an agent accessing my doc site and then just return Markdown directly to that agent in, in, instead of HTML to save token, to simplify life from agents. We're seeing almost all documentation pages now include little buttons saying copy to Markdown. 
because people are constantly working with these agents. Um, and um, we have to think differently about documentation when we're writing it, not just for humans, but for LLMs, right? Like they are not human and, and they come to our products in a different way. Um, I, I made a little example of like doing this content negotiation for Netlify's own site with an agent runner, like basically getting plot code to implement it. But I think this is gonna be a really common pattern across documentation sites. MCP is, uh, is starting to be used a lot for documentation purposes. A lot of people think about MCP kind of as a wrapper for APIs and tools. I think more about MCP as a UI for, for LLMs and as a way to insert yourself inside that agent loop and be able to manipulate the context or get the right context in front of the LLM. And that's why you'll see projects like Context7 that has like MCPs for lots of different open source libraries not to allow any kind of like API calls or something, but simply to give the right documentation for the LLMs at the right time. Um, and there's like a, a MCP, still a bit experimental for, for, for Veed, that drives the same kind of like loop to help LLMs use Veed better. And I think we'll, we'll see more of that. Um, if you're building MCPs, don't treat them as a wrapper over over an API, like treat them as a UI for, for LLMs. Netlify's MCP is an, an example of this where if you take Netlify's API, we have around 100 different endpoints. If we just like put out an MCP that wrapped all of those endpoints, that would, for most LLMs, simply just like overload the context and make them really bad at calling any tool. So installing our MCP would just mean that your agent got worse at everything, right? Like, which would not be great, bad agent experience, right? Like instead, we thought about our MCP really as a different user interface for agents to Netlify and condensed all of this down to five tools that covers different, different areas of, of the platform. One tool for understanding how to use our different primitives from data to blobs to functions to edge functions. One tool to cover the whole aspect of actually deploying either new sites or existing sites to Netlify, one for managing projects and so on. Um, so again, think about MCP as UI for, for LLMs. MCP UI is, is another part of that journey. It's a new project that, that, that's sort of gaining traction where you can even put sort of UI components inside MCPs that uh, LLMs that have access to browsers or agents that are running inside browsers can, can use to, to show UI to the users, right? Like, but I think it's important to understand that the strengths of MCP is not just exposing tool calls, it's actually to get access to the context and do context engineering within that agent loop. Let's talk about the actual tools and how we call those tools. Like one big aspect of, of, of AX is that if you have a product or a tool, agents will try to use it today. Right, like agents will use computer use or browser extensions to access your product. So every product today have an agent experience. It's not a question of adding one. It's a question of, do you have a good agent experience or do you have a bad agent experience? And sometimes people think that if they have a good developer experience, they sort of automatically have a good agent experience because these agents can write code and understand it, but it's not the case. And I'll give you a small example for our own world. Our CLI has a pretty good developer experience. This is an example of like the original developer experience of our CLI for deploying a, a, a new project, right? Like you write Netlify deploy, you get some questions and like, do we want this to be a new project or an existing project? Do we want to give it a name or just let us pick none? And now in a few seconds, we have a URL and a project running on global infrastructure. That, that always seemed fine, right? Like here's, Plot code trying to use that exact same CLI. Um, and I ask it, go deploy this project. It starts looking a bit at the project structure, and in this case, finds over oh, this like, really simple static side. I, I should be trivial, just run Netlify deploy. And then it gets hit with like the interactive questions of like, do you want to deploy a new project or not? And can navigate those. It starts trying to use weird bash constructs to feed like 
characters into that and see if it can select in the menu in that way and doesn't really work and then starts like trying random other CLI commands to see if it can like initialize the project but doesn't have a repository and starts going in a loop and gets confused and uh, it doesn't really do anything useful and in the end I, I think in this session I had to just give up and say like okay it's not working right like so uh, <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> This kind of uh, user testing experience is like, you, you think your tool is really simple and intuitive, but for LLMs it might not be. So how do you fix it, right? Like in our case, this is now the developer experience of, of the CLI. It's exactly the same as before, except that it prints this simple line saying like, if you want to do this in a fully non-interactive way, here's like the code you should use and then otherwise it behaves the same. So now if we get Claude code to try it, it'll run the same command as before, but in that first failure where it gets in interactive mode, it'll see, oh, here's the way I should actually use this tool if I wanna go non-interactive. It'll use that command and it'll work. And in this case, we'll like sort of in a few seconds have a much better experience where Claude Code actually managed to deploy the project and, and, and everything works ex as expected, right? Like, so don't take for granted that DX equals AX. You have to actually put yourself in front of models and see how they work. Last part is, is um, orchestration that I think is gonna be a larger and larger trend. Great example is, is linear. Um, I think about Notion, constantly trying to put their agent in front of our team and get us to use their agent. And then I think Linear takes a very different approach of like agent experience and says like, hey, we can orchestrate any agent for you, right? Like want to start uh, using Claude Code or um, Devin or any of those, just tell Linear and, and, and they'll start doing work within your product, within our product. In a similar way, we've uh, launched Agent Runners last week that lets you orchestrate Claude Code, uh, Codex, Gemini CLI directly inside Netlify, and that's a full part of the workflows we offer. And I think that's something we'll see from more and more tools. And I think we'll see more and more of this split between companies trying to stuff their agents down your throat in some way, and then companies orchestrating other agents that you're already using as collaborators within the workflows they offer. So again, summing up, AX in practice, like some of the big areas to think about is access. Can, you tr can, can agents access your product or tool? Do they have the right context? Do you offer the right tools and are they actually good for LLMs? Um, and should you do orchestration of these agents within your tools and, and within your workflows? Really critical for, for, for developer tools today as this massive expansion of who can use our tools is happening through agents and really important for any kind of product tomorrow. Um, and for us, it's really been this massive difference of like, we're still on this core mission of enabling the world's developers to, to build with the open web. But we can now tell almost everyone, you and our developer, right? Like almost everyone can now actually interface with and, and use Netlify as long as we build a really great agent experience for our tool. And for developers, it means that you can start thinking more and more about your team, not as a team of developers and a set of stakeholders that depend on you, but as one team of, of collaborators that can all work across the same code bases and, and the same projects if the agent experience across all of that is great. Thank you, have a great conference.